shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who be faithless. You may be seated. A special welcome to you on this holiest of nights. We are glad that you are worshiping with us. And a very, very special welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that this service is edifying to your faith. I invite you now, if you would please, to sign the pew register that's in your pew. And if need be, pass this register down. If you are from out of town, please note the city from which you have come. We always enjoy seeing where people have come to us from. Tomorrow we do have a service, one service at 10 a.m. There is no child care provided, but again, one service tomorrow at 10, and we invite all of you to come and worship with us on Christmas Day. Beloved, let us pray. Good and gracious God, on this holy night you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all, lying in a manger. On this holy night, draw us, we pray, into the mystery of your powerful love. Join our voices with the heavenly host that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
chapter 1, verses 26 through 37. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
It was night, very dark. They sat around a fire. The desert, we imagined, was cold. The sheep were sleeping safely nearby. And then, in the blink of an eye, an angel, the messenger of God, appeared before the shepherds. And the angel told the shepherds, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. I wonder why Luke includes the detail of Jesus being wrapped in bands of cloth. It seems so unnecessary, the detail that is. But the more that I think about this little detail, the more I begin to suppose that the wrapping of anything is significant. I mean, 
We don't wrap presents or food or people that are unimportant to us, do we? We only spend the time and energy wrapping something or someone that we care about. Baby Jesus, wrapped in bands of cloth because he was deeply loved by his mama and his daddy. I have this vivid memory coming home late one Christmas Eve night. It was about 12 years ago. William, my son, was one year old. Before climbing into bed, I went to check on little William, to see him, to watch him, to kiss his cheek, to pray over him. And then I remember taking his little yellow blanket and wrapping it around his shoulders. It was like wrapping a present. It's easy to get wrapped up in so many things during the Christmas season. We might get wrapped up in a frenzy of buying presents. In fact, I think I saw a couple of you at Target today. Or we might get wrapped up in a frenzy of getting presents. We might get wrapped up in nostalgia. Or we might get wrapped up in hosting the perfect Christmas party or making the perfect Christmas meal. And then sometimes, sometimes we can get wrapped up in ourselves, which is, of course, the antithesis to the Christmas spirit. In his very famous book, The Grinch, Dr. Seuss reminds us of something very important. At the end of the book, which my family likes to read every Christmas season, at the very end of the book, we read, quote, Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? The spirit of Christmas, the spirit that has brought you here tonight, the spirit of Christmas goes deeper than bows and parties and perfect meals, Christmas trees and ornaments. Christmas, the incarnation of God Almighty. Christmas is about love. God's love for humanity. God's love for you. The birth of Jesus suggests that God has wrapped the world in bands of cloth, bands of love. And tonight, tonight I hope that you hear God whispering to you. And God will whisper to you, I love you. You are my daughter. You are my son. And I am always, always with you. To God be the glory this day and throughout all eternity. Amen. Beloved, 
beloved children of God, let us now go to God with our prayers of the people. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you who have come to us in Jesus Christ, give us, we ask, such love and wonder that with the shepherds and the magi and pilgrims unknown, we may come to adore the holy child, the promised king, and with our gifts may we worship him. O oh God, we offer to you tonight the hurting places and hurting people of the world, especially those people known only to us. We continue to remember those who were affected by Hurricane Matthew to you, that they might feel your presence in an intimate way tonight. Almighty God, may you transcend this world which is desperate for peace. We pray this prayer in the name of your love made flesh, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Beloved, even as God offered God's very self to us 2,000 years ago, and even as God continues to offer God's self to us this very night, let us now offer a portion of that which God has entrusted to our care for the spreading of God's love. We will now collect the offering.
All those able, please rise for our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Then we say together, Great God of power, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came to save the world from our sins. We thank you for the hope of the prophets, the song of the angels and the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. We thank you that in Jesus you became flesh and dwelt among us, sharing human hearts and pleasures. Glory to you for your grace-filled love. Glory to you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, now and forever. And we are bold to pray the prayer that Christ taught his followers, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. On this Christmas Eve, we are gathered as God's people to celebrate again what Christ's coming means to the world and to each of us. Tonight we join with Christians from all over the world in celebrating the gift of God's love and life to us in the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Hear the words of Isaiah, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hear also, hear also these words from Luke's Gospel. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, proceed. I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. We light the central Christ candle as a symbol of Christ's abiding presence with us. In Christ is our hope, our peace, our joy, the gift of God's love. Always, Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. Christ is the light of the world. We will now spread the light. Feel free to stand as we sing Silent Night.
that I charge you to go into this holy night and love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul. And may the grace of God Almighty rest upon you this day and throughout all eternity. Amen.